In 2020, this familiar title screen would set off an entire team of Minecraft investigators on a mission to uncovering the seed behind the blurred title screen. But would they actually find it, and where did it all start? Okay, imagine this. It's the 14th of June, and one inspired seed investigator named Tom wondered if the world behind the title screen was actually somewhere out there. However, before even starting his investigation, there was one serious problem. The background of this title screen was completely blurred out, and when asking fellow investigators if they were ready on the case, no one seemed to be interested. So Tom had to push forwards alone, staying up all night, diving deep into the Minecraft files, until finally, aha, he'd found it. Six low quality screenshots in all directions that when put together, form what called a cube map. It turned out the game was actually blurring the title screen itself, giving Tom his first breakthrough. Although with this exciting news, another problem started developing. This title screen had been in the game for such a long time, it had survived some major updates, including one that completely changed Minecraft's world generation. So Tom had his doubts. Was this title screen from beta 1.8 on the cutoff point where completely new world generation was introduced, or was it from an older version such as beta 1.7? It wouldn't be immediately clear, but by looking at the changes that were made in 1.8, including the game's lighting, the sea level being completely shifted one block down, and the clouds being raced higher, Tom figured the panorama screenshot had to have come from beta 1.7. This completely opened up Tom's research, allowing him to dive deep into the panorama and figuring out that whoever took the screenshot was in fact facing south. So what now? Well, Tom knew if he wanted to find the seed, he'd need to find the exact coordinates of where the player stood. So he got back to work, digging up the Y coordinate by simply counting the blocks from the water level, and the Z coordinate, despite requiring a little bit more work, being found through the cloud patterns. Having the Y and Z coordinates was massive progress, however the X coordinate would remain completely missing. But Tom still felt like he'd passed a major hurdle, and wondered if it was truly enough evidence to get the other seed hunters on board. And of course, there was only one way to find out. He reached out, showing them what he'd discovered, and without a second thought, they were instantly hooked. This one man seed hunt had now become a full on operation, and this time, the investigators weren't going to waste a second, as they realised they would need a way to measure every block accurately, and decided recreating the world block by block using panorama images would be the cleaner solution. So when an investigator named Philip D opened a server for anyone to join, the hunt really started picking up momentum. But with every win in this investigation, a problem always seemed to follow, as not having the original image overlaid in real time meant the team's builders would have to keep going painstakingly back and forth between their block placements and the panorama image. This was a real issue, until an investigator suggested setting up bots with a constant live feed of the six views. And despite the idea sounding a bit absurd at first, an investigator named Dutchen went ahead developing a mod to do exactly that. However, the use of mods wouldn't stop there, as others were created to adjust the game's rendering and grass offset which actually allowed Tom to uncover the missing X coordinate and the exact positioning of where the panorama was taken. This level of progress was now attracting more experienced seed hunters, all asking the same question. What would truly be the best method to cracking the seed? The investigators started exploring their options, discussing methods and ideas whilst a seed hunter named Earth Computer experimented with narrowing down the correct chunk seed by the position of a specific tree and the grass around it. However, this method only led to disappointment, as the grass didn't narrow down the results as much as they'd hoped for, forcing the investigators to completely abandon this approach. But they weren't going to give up so soon, as on their second attempt, Earth Computer would work alongside two other seed hunters named Cortex and Neil and together, they would come up with a new plan. You see, they would program a multi-level filter that would check through all 280 trillion world seeds until they found an exact match. Or at least, they hoped so. Because as good as this theory was, generating every world in existence would need a ridiculous computer and a couple centuries of waiting time. So the investigators had to be smart about this. They picked out three specific features from the game's code that also existed inside of the panorama, and reassembled it into three super-optimized filters. A tree checker, a biome checker, and a terrain checker. Now, bear with me while I explain all of this. You see, with the tree checker being the fastest and first filter, any seed that wouldn't match the tree in the panorama would be immediately discarded, and only the seeds that passed would move on to a second slower filter where two biome borders would be matched against the panorama. From here, any remaining seeds would have a few blocks of their terrain checked as well, hopefully leaving out only the real panorama seed in the end. This was exhilarating for the investigators, as the idea of finding a seed so soon would be a huge accomplishment. But despite 
despite the massive optimizations, it was clear that if they actually wanted to go ahead with this, they would need to get a hold of an insane amount of computing power that they simply didn't have. At least that's what they thought, as they quickly remembered a previous project aiming to find the tallest cactus, using a platform called Boink, allowing players who were also interested in the seed hunt to donate their graphics cards to calculate the seeds, speeding up the search immensely. Although, as the investigators started tinkering with using Boink, they quickly discovered it wouldn't be as easy as they first thought, as they were faced with tricky technical issues that would take some serious time to resolve. And so for a moment, things went quiet. But it wouldn't last long, as a group of frustrated seed hunters took it upon themselves to leave out Boink and return to their original plan. You see, they would rent out all the computer power needed to run the filter system correctly, and in turn, instead of failure, it had worked. The filter had narrowed down every seed, and as the investigators excitedly looked through the results, they were hit with a sudden realization. Not a single seed that the filter had sorted matched the one they were looking for. The seed hunters were in utter disbelief, scrambling to find and fix any potential issues that could have caused it to fail in the first place, but in the end being left completely empty handed. As it ultimately turned out, the tree checker, despite being fast, was in fact too unreliable. At this point, the seed hunters were growing tired. They'd been at this for so long and it felt like their chances were getting slimmer and slimmer. But with this big of a setback, the seed hunters knew they would have to change their approach once again, this time forgetting about the tree and solely relying on using biomes and the terrain. But there was a slight problem. You see, checking two biome borders would let too many seeds through the filter. So Cortex came up with a crazy but straightforward approach on retrieving the biome measurements. As in theory, the colour of grass in Minecraft is determined by the biome it's located in. And so by measuring the colour, the investigators could trace back their steps and find out the biome value for each block, which an investigator named Pseudogravity would take upon himself to work on, as it showed some real potential. But in practice, this was a lot harder than anticipated, as Minecraft secretly uses a climate system with temperature and humidity values, meaning he would have to find exactly how the game uses these numbers to pick a colour. And after digging through Minecraft's files, discovering the game uses texture to determine colours of the biome, with high humidity making things look greener, while drier areas are made to look more greyish or brown, it allowed him to finally calculate the climate values and completely reviving the excitement around the seed hunt. This was amazing news, and the investigators weren't going to waste a second, as Cortex with Earth Computer went ahead to implement these new bio measurements into the seed cracking code. The stakes this time around were so much higher, with everyone painstakingly double checking everything to make sure no mistakes would slip through. And it was a good job they did, as they noticed a problem within how the measurements were taken that could have completely thrown off the seed hunt. It was incredibly lucky that they had spotted it, and now with everything set up and ready to go, they began, with the investigators hoping Hoping Boink would kick in hard, as with just the code, they were stuck only calculating 10 million seeds per second. And luckily enough, Boink really kicked in, with over 230 GPUs contributing towards cracking the seed, making it at the time the 16th most powerful supercomputer in the world. Now, despite this power, the seed hunters estimated that it would take around a week for the seed to be filtered and checked through, so anxiety was understandably high among the seed hunters, as they could still end up with no result if even the smallest of errors was encountered. But to everyone's surprise, six nervous hours after Boink was activated and a month worth of methods, attempts and strategy, they had actually done it. The seed was finally cracked and shortly after revealed to the public within a YouTube video.